Good morning. Um, I graded your quiz number 11 last night. You probably have seen the feedback. Um, I wish to emphasize the importance that you submit according to instruction. Because when you submit according to instruction, I will have, I can grade your quiz with the access to a grading software. If you don't, that software is not available for me to grade your quiz, you know, to, to make the necessary markings and so on and so forth. Okay, if you have trouble uploading, okay, um, you might have used the wrong browser. This uploading, uh, you know, this this kind of uploading your pro your you know, um, your file has been tested over and over again, many many times. It works. If it doesn't work, if it doesn't work, it's it must be from your end. You might be using the wrong browser, or you need to, or your internet connection is not uh, uh, proper. And then, then you need to leave enough time to get your work done and submit. If you submit in the last minute, um, of course, that could uh, all kind of thing could happen. Okay, so the the instructions are very very clear. Has been these instructions has been tested not only and being used not only by me and by many, many other instructors at El Camino College in the math department. So these instructions and how you upload it, it works. It has, we have never have a problem if you use the right browser. Okay, so please do follow the instructions and I will not take another exception. Okay, I will not take another exception. Okay, so so please forgive me. You know, I took it yesterday, but not again. Now, mistakes. I was reading your quiz, and I saw this mistake. Okay, that this mistake and the similar mistakes show up for cosine and tangent, right? Dividing sine. This is a terrible mistake. This is a terrible mistake. I don't know where you learned this. Okay, I don't know where you learned this. I certainly didn't teach this way. Did I teach this way? If you're making this kind of mistake, you need to go back to watch my lecture. Okay, and, uh, and the, the bad news is that we have multiple people. We have more than one making the same mistake, making the same mistake. Okay, so if you do this kind of work, Number one, my question is, have you taken trigonometry? Okay, have you taken trigonometry? If you have not taken trigonometry, you may like to drop this class and take trigonometry because at this rate, you're not gonna make it, uh, you're not gonna pass calculus class. You're not, I'm sorry. I, I, I think it would be better to know sooner than later. It's better to know sooner than later. Okay, I saw the similar work. It's done for cosine and tangent by the same person. And there are multiple people doing that. More than one people, you know, one, more than one person is doing this kind of work. Okay, so you either just make up where you missed for, uh, for trigonometry. This is a very serious mistake and from, from which, you know, professor will try to see what was going on. What went wrong? So our analysis and my analysis is that you didn't understand the basic notation. You didn't understand that this, this student did not understand, you know, did not understand the basic notation. You never ever write it this way. Sign is a rule. It, the rule has to work on a, uh, an input. Okay, you cannot take a single, you cannot take this rule and as, uh, use it as a divisor. Okay, this is almost, I would say, it's an unforgivable mistake. It's an unforgivable mistake. I should have given you zero on the entire quiz. 
I should have given you zero on the entire quiz. Okay, which would be better for you? I didn't because I was a little lenient. And the use of notation, okay, I, there are people use X for X for everything. It confuses, I don't know if it confuses you, it confuses the reader. Okay, it confuses the reader. Okay, so you got your quiz back. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I will go over that quiz with you. And last night I also worked out the solution and sent it to you. Okay, we have covered a very important topics, which is trigonometry, you know, for, for a couple of weeks last, you know, and which ended last week. If this is the kind of work we, we, we saw, you know, if this is the kind of work we saw, I just want to give you a big warning sign. You probably cannot make it through calculus. Even if you pass the class or you barely pass this class, the prospect is no good. The prospect is no good. Okay. So I, I hope to give you some feedback because I know most of you probably you know, register in this class by self-identification because we, we no longer require prerequisite, right? And besides, we also have a, a, a support class. If after going through all of these materials, you're still doing this, okay? And some people just give three, three angles for each question, one angle for each question. And that shows this person probably have never taken trigonometry. Okay, there are other mistakes. So from my, uh, I'm not judging you, I'm judging your work. From your work, if you really have not a take trigonometry, you don't want to waste the time because for sure you're not gonna pass a calculus. But by the time you did, you, you get into calculus, however way you get it, right? You get it, you know, a passing grade or something you get into calculus class, you're not gonna pass it. And by that time, you should go back to take trigonometry. So it's better if you go back to take trigonometry now, instead of later, that will, be, that will actually save you time. So my recommendation is actually for your benefit, for your good, so you will not waste maybe one semester, or even one year of so time but you need to go back anyway. You need to go back anyway, okay? So um, I just wanna be straightforward with you. I don't wanna you know, beat about the bushes and say you're fine. And then you ended up waste you know, one semester or one year of time. And meanwhile, be frustrated in this class. Um, I think your time is precious. You don't wanna waste that time. Okay, so please write it down. If you didn't make this mistake, congratulations. But we have more than one uh, person make these kind of mistakes. And the similar mistakes also show up for cosine and tangent, which is absolutely alarming, absolutely alarming, okay? So let's, without further ado, let's, uh, let's move forward. Okay, I have seen one submission of quiz number 12. And I shall give you another quiz regarding uh, solving inequality equations or inequality, inequalities involving absolute values. Okay. So uh, let me put this away. Okay. So you understand these are terrible, horrible, horrible mistakes. Okay. You're making right here, right now. Okay. There are lots of other mistakes that show up on the on the on the quiz. Okay. So each one of you, each one of you, if you didn't get 12 points out of this, you you, you haven't learned much. You haven't learned much. You really haven't learned much about trigonometry. So this review for you hasn't helped, hasn't helped. 
Okay, that's my assessment because I'm assessing you and I'm giving you feedback about what you should do, what you should do next. Okay, sometimes we may be under the disguise or disillusion, we're, we're disillusioned that, oh, I understand the, the, the class. Did I tell you my, my own story? I told you my own story, right? I, I understood everything. I understood everything. Yeah, it's easy. Well, wait until you do the you do the question you, you work on the questions. Okay. And the consequence of not understanding what you know, what you don't know, it could be wasting waste of time for for years. For years. I've seen students who take calculus one, two, three, three times. And that student should go back to take algebra. If you need to repeat the calculus for three times, you should go back to take algebra. If you keep repeating calculus class, you still not, you, you, you still, you're still, the reason is because your algebra is weak most of the time. And you're still hanging the calculus class for whatever reason. You really should go back to do algebra, okay? If you're sitting in a calculus class and you cannot derive all of that stuff, and that tells you one, one piece of information and one piece of information only, your algebra needs to be mended. That is all, that is all, okay? And I don't want you guys to be disillusioned. Okay, what you're learning, this stuff is hard. You have to devote a lot of your energy. Okay, a lot of your energy and really, really, you know, get to it. But I, I think I have said enough. Okay, so let's continue to look at these. Um, solving inequalities. Yesterday we did a basic four, five, six. Okay, four, five, six. And you should be able to do basic seven A. Basic seven A. Okay, the quiz number 12 I give you, quiz number 12 is exactly the same quiz I gave to my intermediate algebra class. Okay, we'll see how you do. We'll see how you do. Okay, so let's look at basics 7a. Okay, so um, basic 7a. So yesterday we talked about the three types, right? We talked about the three types. So that's, let's, let me bring them up, right? Let me bring them up. You know, on solving inequalities of the three types, right? Of course, it's not limited to three types. Of course, it's not limited to three types. But, and the other factor we use is really these. Okay, I'm gonna put it on the bottom. Okay, it's gonna make it easier as accessible for me, okay? All right, basic 7a. Among these three types, when we say that, when we say that, you know, the absolute value of any quantity, of any, any number, right? The absolute value of any number. What does that mean? The absolute value of any number really means that this one, this X can be anything in any form, anything, any form. For example, right? I could have absolute value of sine X. Okay, I can have absolute value of ln X. Okay, I can also have cosine ln x. 
Do you, do you know what I mean? Anything means anything. Anything means anything. In 7A, of course, you didn't see these forms, but you will in calculus. You will in calculus. There can be anything in any form. All right. So what are the anything you see? What are the anything you have seen? You, well, you, you will see, right? The homework was assigned to you um, yesterday. Absolute value of 5x less than 20. Okay, I'm taking the first one for example, just to explain to you what is that anything means? What is that anything means? In this case, that anything is for omega is 5x. And it is still true. You follow me? So it's so still true. So is that's what we meant? That's anything. Okay. How about these axes? These axes will also turn can also turn into anything. Okay. These axes can also turn into anything. So it's very much a, so you see the X we have dealt with earlier, it can be anything as well. Okay, and everything stay the same. So this is symbolic operation, the symbolic operation will give us the opportunity to work with these absolute value related if statements, right? Absolute value related if statement. So let's let's review what are we talking about the if statement, right? Remember what does mean? What does this mean? It's it's if, right? Right? It it, it means that this function is an if statement. If this is Lesson, don't forget that basic connotation, the basic meaning. I teach this class, my focus is the meaning. That's how I learn it, because if I don't understand the meaning, I don't know what to do. I understand the meaning, then I know what to do. Does that make sense, you guys? So I treat you the way I wish to be treated. I do, that's what I'm trying to do. I treat you, I teach you the way I wish to be taught. That's why I emphasize so much over and over again. But if you, if you come to my class, you say, oh, I, I don't want, I don't need to understand. I don't care about understanding. I just want to remember a couple of steps and then, you know, what form and in this case I do what, then you should not be in my class because you will find a lot of things I said and done is a waste of your time. But I've done what I'm do I've been doing for many semesters. I always get, I get lots of feed positive feedback. So I decided I'm going to stick to what I do. I teach the way I wish to be taught. Was I taught this way? The answer is no. I wasn't taught this way. But I learned this way. I, I figure out, you know, I understand. I, once I understand the meaning, it's like a window open. Voila. Everything becomes streamlined, simple, straightforward consistent, unambiguous, okay? I was not teach, I was not taught this way, but I want to teach this way because this is the way I learned. I finally understood, okay? I did not understand this at this level when I graduated from college, but now I do, okay? thanks to the many years of teaching, 
okay, reflecting. All right, so that if statement, okay, and this is also if statement is, is three. Okay, I don't need to put more word. It is same as and so on, so forth. And the next one is greater, greater than three. Okay, so these are the these are the figures. These are the figures, right? These are the figures. All the inequalities involve absolute value. I would say ninety nine point nine percent of them can be resolved by all of these, by what I highlighted. Is there anything you know outside this box? I haven't seen them. I have not seen them. All of those questions can be answered this way, by understanding. I mean, I'm not saying memorizing understanding what I did here. So now I want you to take a close look at this. Do you understand what I'm doing right here? We did it yesterday and today, we just have a simple change from X to Omega and illustrated anything. And next we're gonna do some examples to, to experience what it really means. Okay, I'm waiting for you down. I'm, I'm waiting for you to write it down. I still emphasize you should write it down, not just take a picture. Okay, sometimes we take a picture, we don't know what that picture means. We thought we pick, we take a picture is mine. I, I got it. No, you didn't. Taking a picture is useful for a lot of things but it doesn't replace you when you're doing math. Write it down. Reflect on what I'm, I would just said, okay? I want you to write it down, okay? You see, I organize it this way. I organize it this way. I don't see you see many of these in any textbook and put it all together for you. I would do this for myself, right? Did you write it down? Write it down, write it down. The meaning, reflect on the meaning, right? And I, of course, I can insert another uh, another row just to, you know, uh, put the functions, me the meaning of function in there, right? So you will see more consistency. You see more consistency.
Okay, are we done? Are we done? Okay, so let's continue to work on this table. Let's work on, let's continue to work on this table, okay? As we work on this table, now, could I change this, all these threes to one? Do you think the situation will be similar? Yeah, similar. Could I change this to 3.2? So these three, it's just really just an example, right? I can change this to 3.2, like we did it yesterday. I can change this to 100. And I can change this to 20. Same thing, right? The idea is the same. Do you understand? The idea is the same. If I change it to one, suppose I can change it to one, of course, no problem. Okay, so let's go back to three then. Okay, so you see that this can be changed, right? So you're gonna see, that's how you see different kinds of questions in uh, basic 7a. Could I, could I change this to negative three? What will happen then? Yes, you can change it to negative three. What will happen? No solution. Yes, you can change it to any number. Why no solution? Right here. Right here. You guys see that? When you change it to negative three, what happens? No solution. Because the absolute value of anything is going to be greater than or equal to zero. Do you guys follow me? Okay. What if I change it to zero? No solution as well. You follow me? If I change it to, to less than zero, no solution because absolute value of anything is always greater than or equal to zero. Do you guys follow me? This is the power of you can work alone and thinking. Every one of you have that ability. You just, some of you may not have, you know, started using it. Now, could I change this to change back to one? Of course, right? No problem. Now, could I change this to zero? Of course, the solution would just be the omega must be zero, right? Could I change this to negative one? No solution. Why no solution? Because the absolute value of, of omega is always greater than or equal to zero. So this is not, it's not possible, isn't it? Are you guys with me? The same thing can be said here. The absolute value of omega is greater than three. What if I make it negative three? Could I do that? Of course I can. I can totally give you a question like that. And what is the answer? How many solutions do you have? You will have an infinite number of solutions. Yeah? Are you with me? That's what I'm saying. All three types, they cover all, they cover all, all the cases. If you think about, that's how you study. Because then you say, well, this is less than three. What if it's less than one? What if it's less than negative one, right? What if it's less than zero? Because you see those cases in the exercises. And these three cases cover all of them. And along with this statement, you will be invincible. We are invincible. We just have to know how to use it. You just have to put on that armor. What is that armor? Your armor is our understanding, is right here. So now, so do you guys understand what I'm in now? This process is called a study. This process is called study, okay? 
I wish you to understand, and I also wish you to give you some examples of studying. Okay. All right, so let's look at 7A, the first one. So now you look at seven, uh, you, you look at this, hold on, what did I, did I miss something? Absolute value. Which, which type does this fall into? Right here, right? So what's your omega? Your omega is five X and three is replaced by 20. Do you guys see that? So how do you solve it? Solution, right? It's between negative 20, 5X less than 20. And then what you do? That's the first step. That's the first step, right? First step, what did we get? The solution in the end, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna put the solution on the top just for convenience. Okay, I'm just going to put the solution on the top. All the illustrations, I'm going to um, hold on. Okay, I'm gonna put these algebraic form right here. Got it? Okay. And uh, end is implied, you don't need it. Okay. So most of the time you really just need these two rows. Once you understand, okay, all those these pictures to illustrate, once you understand what you need to deal with your situation is these two rows. Okay, so let me see how I can, uh, I'm gonna highlight this. Let me see if I, if I can. Uh, no, I cannot. I cannot highlight just part of it, okay? Just this piece, right? So I'm just using this piece, okay? And then you divide every side by, because we're solving for X. So you're gonna divide every side by five. Five is a positive number, right? Five is a positive number. So we divide this by five, divide this by five, divide this by five. So in the end, what do we get? We get negative four is less than X and X is less than four. And this step, I, I don't even require you to show this step, it's optional. Do you, see, do you guys see how easy that is? Okay, do you guys see how easy that is? Okay. There's another way to do it. There's another way to do it. Since we're here, so I'd like to show you. Okay. Another way to do this is that this pertain to the operation of absolute value. You know, absolute value, you know, you, you, cannot, you cannot do these. Okay, so let me put a note here, okay? Because we, we had these in, 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 uh, on the previous pages, right? You cannot do, you cannot do these. For example, if you have absolute value, right? You have A plus B, can you separate them? to absolute value of A plus absolute value B. You are subtracting. The answer is no, you, we cannot do this. We cannot do this. 
because these are false statements, false statements. But, but we can, we can do this. If we multiply A with B, okay, then we can separate them with the absolute value of A or absolute value of B. Or the absolute value of division dividing. And that will be equals to the absolute value of division. So absolute value is one of those tricky operations. You cannot do this. You cannot do this because they are false. They are false. We have counterexamples. Okay, we have counterexamples. And, but we can do these. For multiplication division, you can separate. Okay, for, for, for multiplication division, we can separate. Okay, so therefore, we can do five times absolute value of x, less than 20. Okay, and then you can divide both sides by five. Absolute value of x less than five, uh, less than four, sorry, less than four. And then as a result, we get the same answer. We get the same answer. Of course, we should get the same answer, right? Of course, we get the same answer. Okay, so that's the the other way to do it. Do you guys want to try some with this example? How about you guys pick, okay? Please pick three hard questions from what? From basics 7a. Okay, three hard questions for you. I want you guys to work on it right now. Okay, so I, I mean, I also would like to see that you, um, if you want to share your work with the class, you can upload your pictures or, but I want you guys to work on these. Please, okay, please pick three hard questions, hard for you. Okay, the hard question for you, hard for you. Okay, is everybody is different. Everybody is different. Okay. And you have taken the notes, right? You have taken the notes. And if there's any particular part you want me to show, and here we go. They're all here. Eventually, these figures will be in your head because you understand. Okay, it will be in your head because you understand. All right, do that. Okay, by the way, um, yeah, I think we, we have everything.
I should give you like five minutes. Okay, just excuse me, just a, for a few minutes. Okay, I'll be right back. You guys still working on it? Yeah. How's it going? Has it become easier? Yeah, I'm on the last one. You know, 
For most of us, you really just need practice. You really just need practice. You see, you understand. You say, I tell, I tell myself, I understand. But you have to practice. Okay, it's like you, you, you watch someone, you know, driving. I, I believe, well, I assume that all of us are drivers, right? So that's, that may not be a good example. You watch someone to, well, you, you watch a carpenter put together a table, right? In the hands of the carpenter, it looks so easy, isn't it? It looks very easy. You know, I like to, I don't know if you, what, what kind of show you like to watch, right? I like to watch those, uh, you know, this old house, that kind of show. Okay, you see people make an, an old house into a beautiful, you know, new house. It looks very easy. But when we do it, when we do it ourselves, right? Is it gonna be that easy? Of course not, of course not. Or you look at a Kobe Bryant shooting, you know, shooting the loops, right? The basket, in the basket, basketball court. How, how easy does it look? How beautiful does it look? How nice does it look? But just try ourselves. We know what to, you know, what we are, we are good at, right? We probably cannot do it nearly as good. Okay. All right, so I'm ready to take your question. You're ready, okay? I, cer I certainly can, I, I can be patient. I can wait for you, but I'm ready to take, take your question. Do you have any questions? No? Um, for number seven, for number seven on basic 7A. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's the absolute value of three X plus two is less less than or equal to four? I thought it was less than four. Huh? Is this the one you're talking about? Oh, wait, less than, oops. Less than. That's okay, that's not a, not easy to correct. Less than four. Mm -hmm. Now what's your question? I just wanted to see if I had the right answer. Okay. The next step is 3x plus 2 
larger than negative four and smaller than four. Okay, and then you subtract two on every side. Okay, this will become negative six, gone. And this is positive two. And, so, and divided by three on all sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. So this would be two, two thirds. And that will be negative two. Okay. Yeah. Is that pretty straightforward? Yeah. I was just yeah. checking to make sure if I did it the right way. Yeah. Straightforward. Okay. It's not, isn't that pretty straightforward? Okay. Another one. Let's do another one. We haven't done greater than, right? We've been doing less than. I'm going to put this over here. Okay. Everything you need to know about solving absolute value, if you want it in a condensed form, is right here. Right here. And these three cases and their variations. They're all here. Now you probably have seen every types of questions. Okay, they're all here. But yet, I, I told you yesterday, right? Over the past 25 years of teaching in community colleges, there's never one semester, I don't see any mistake on these things. Including if I if you consider that the years I when I, when I was in graduate school at USC, those you know undergraduate student I was a TA for, and they, they have similar mistakes that our student make. Okay, it seems that the same mistakes just show up over and over and over and over again every year. Okay. So shall we do another, shall we do a couple more or just one more? If, if you don't have any questions, I, we can certainly move forward. You pick up one or I pick up one. Did I pick up number six for you? This is a mistake. I call it perpetual mistake. I see every year. I see every semester. Okay. 
this is a mistake I see every semester. Did I, I, I pointed out this kind of mistake, right? Horrible, horrible. How, please, please don't do this. Please don't do it, okay? What, do, what should we do? The model is right here. Omega is x plus one. Okay, so we're covering the case of equal to one or greater than one, right? Equal or greater than one. So how do we set up? Right, you have that picture in your head, don't we? Except this time isn't between negative one and positive one, it's outside, right? So x plus one less than equals to negative one. Or in this case, you have to separate it. You cannot abbreviate, you cannot do that kind of link. Okay. Please, I'm, 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 I'm about to beg you guys. None of you should do that. Okay, what I highlighted, please don't do that. Okay. I saw this kind of mistake when I was a TA at USC. You think those students are better than you? I'm not sure. And I've seen these mistakes after I graduated you know, teaching for all these years. I still see this mistake. Okay, I've talked to someone who still teach at USC and he was telling me the students are still making this mistake. His students are still making this same mistake. Okay, so please, please don't. Okay, just practice. Really under, try to understand what I'm doing here. Yes, it's not very good, difficult. If you think this is very simple for you, you know, overcome it. If you think this is very hard for you, overcome it. Okay, these kind of questions will not go away. These kind of questions will not go away. Okay, they're waiting for you in four year schools if you're transferring there and you, if you're majoring in STEM, they're there. Right? And what's the next step? Okay, I'm gonna talk about how I'm gonna give you points. Okay, how I give points. X plus one, Okay, you just write it as x less than equal to by subtracting one on both sides. Or x is greater than or equal to zero. To solve this, solve this inequality, to solve this inequality, And this step is three points. If you show this kind of work, if you show this kind of work, zero points. Okay? But sometimes people will, sh will give me the right answer here. It's very interesting. I don't know how, he, how this student could get the right answer. Okay, then you come back and you tell me, hey, I got the right answer even though I made this step. But I wanna tell you that this step does not take you there. Therefore, you're gonna get zero point as well. So the whole thing is zero points, okay? Is that clear? Because I don't wanna reward, I don't wanna reward, because this is how I read it. You get this step right, uh, I'm sorry, you get this step wrong. From that wrong step, it doesn't justify the next step. 
yes, this is the right answer, but what I'm also looking at is the logical connection between these two. So if I grade your paper like this, I will typically draw this little arrow. And also I will put this symbol here, cross. What does it mean? It means from this step, which is wrong step, doesn't go there. Therefore, you're gonna get zero. Do you follow me? So even though you get the right answer, I don't know how you get the right, right, right answer. Okay, so now, three points. Okay, every part count. One part, second part, third part. The last step. You're subtracting both sides by, by, you know, by, by subtracting one. And this step, two points. So this question, to do it perfectly, completely perfectly, five points. Okay, five points. Do you see my five fingers? Five points. So you either get zero, you get five. Every step has to be logically connected. Okay, so when I grade your work like this, okay, from here you get there. That's completely wrong. The whole, the work you do here, zero. Zero. Okay. If you come back to say, oh, I, I got the right answer. I'm sorry, I, I have explained that in class. I have explained that in class. Why? Because this happens very common as well. Right? If I give you that two points for correct answer, this is only just rewarding your, your bad behavior. You thought, oh, I can get the right answer. I don't have to show the right step. No, no, no more. Okay. It's like you run the stop sign, right? You run it. Don't do it, please don't do it. Okay, this is a total five points, five points. Okay, I'm waiting for you guys to write it down. I'm, I'm gonna also show you how I give points for the other case. Are you ready? Did you write it down? Write down the mistakes I put on the board. Okay. Box it, maybe. Okay, make some kind of marks for yourself to remind you when you review, you say, hey, that was a mistake. That's a very common mistake. Maybe I made it before, now I'm not gonna make it again. You know, many years ago, I have a, a teacher in high school and he was telling us, you know, don't scratch out the mistakes. Mark it. Mark it because you might make it again. Okay. You might make it again. Don't make it disappear until you are certain you will never make that mistake again. Okay. So that's another tip of studying. Okay. Are you ready? So let me show you how do I give points on the other one. Right, so you will be completely clear as how I give you points or take you points away. On this, solving inequalities like this, right? We know that's the correct answer. How many points do I give? This step. 
is three points. You see this three points and that three points, they are consistent. They are consistent. Do you follow me? They are consistent. And these two, I just give two points. Is that clear, everybody? Is that clear, everybody? Okay. Three points here. This this step is a critical point, a cr critical step. This step is also a critical step. However, other way you have learned it. For this piece, this is not the only way. Okay, I understand that's not the only way, but this is the simplest way. Okay, this way I show you is the simplest way. I'm not gonna show you the other way, but if you want to still, a lot of our students, you were taught by other teachers, they taught you a different way. Your other different way may be right, but I'm not gonna teach you that way. I'm, I'm only gonna teach you one way for that, for this case, that, you know, this time. If you still want to stick to your other way, it's okay. I will judge it with the criteria of mathematics. I will judge your work by the criteria of mathematics. You might be right, you might be wrong, okay? I'm not saying you should not do it any other way, but my way. I'm not that kind of person, okay? My way or highway, no. Right, there are other ways. But for this one, there's only one way, pretty much. There are some variations of this one way. There are some variations, right? Because every way there's some variations. So this, in this case, you don't have another way. In this case, you do have another way. If you still want to do it that way, I'm repeating myself, okay? If you still want to do it that way, go for it. But I will judge your work according to the principles of mathematics. You may be right, you may be wrong, but I assure you, this is the simplest way out there. This is the simplest way. This is the simplest way. Okay? because I have seen much, I have seen much. Okay. All right, so are we ready to move forward? Well, you have another question. Do you have another question? No? As I said, you know, we all need practice, right? I need practice, you need practice too. So that's why I give you basic 7B. We're not gonna do basic 7B. I'm not gonna require you to do 7B, but for some of you, for some of you, some of our students wants to do more exercise, okay, without having to buy another book. Yes, they are here, okay, you can practice. The, some of these questions in 7B actually will be more interesting and some of them are from calculus textbook. Okay, so without further ado, let's get to basic seven, uh, basic eight. Basic eight. What is the intention here? What, what, what do I want to do? What, okay, why do I have these things here? It's just a practice, okay? So this, this section is about practice PRAC. and familiar with perfect square, with perfect squares, and application of this guy.
Okay, so basic aid is basically uh, is a, a group of exercise to get you guys familiar, okay? This is actually just elementary algebra stuff. My point, the point we want to make here is that when we have, you know, square root of x squared, and this x can be anything. Just like the anything we saw just earlier today, okay? In particular, right? You may have something like this. You may have x squared minus 4x plus 4. And you need to reduce that. You need to reduce that, right? Example. How do you do that? Well, You certainly cannot do this. Do we know that? Cannot, okay? You cannot do this, guys. Did I see that mistake? Oh yeah, I have seen all kinds of mistakes. Okay. Now, what can be done? Sometimes, I'm not saying always, sometimes you have, you encounter this question, what can you do? You factor the new, you factor the inside and you realize it's just x minus two squared. You guys see that in the in basic eight? You guys see that in basic eight? And then what you do, you can apply that. You follow me? So now you're gonna have absolute value of x minus two. All right, so this is just one example of why I want you guys to get familiar. So the main thing here is really about factoring some situation that happened to be perfect square and recognize those perfect square, recognize those perfect, perfect square. We actually will get back to those uh, making perfect square later. So this will also serve another purpose because I will have an entire session to cover quadratic, quadratic with you. Okay, so just remember basic six or basic eight right now and get familiar with those perfect squares. They're very, very useful. Okay, they're very, very useful. Even when you're in calculus class, just from time to time, you're gonna encounter them. You're gonna encounter them. Uh, are you gonna encounter them like in the future? You, you may encounter them in, in a statistic class. Okay, in a statistic class. All right, so that's the purpose, okay? That's the purpose of the exercise. And then we get to trick one, right, in the notes. Trick one, you know, you should know the answer now, okay? I'm not gonna spend any time here, okay? If you don't, you should go back to watch my lectures. Okay, you should go back to watch my lectures or read a textbook or watch another professor's lectures or go get another textbook. Basic nine, basic nine, you are expected to know, okay? I don't plan to spend time here, but if you do have a question, I'll be happy to answer your question, okay? Basic nine, you are expected to know, okay? That's very basic, it's elementary algebra stuff. However, okay, this class has, you know, review class, and the support class together, don't, don't be intimidated if you have a question, okay? You ask me the question in private or, you know, or public or to my office hours, okay? So next, we're gonna get to the next topics. 
basic 10A. Okay, so this semester, I'm gonna cover basic 10A along with quadratic. Okay, so I, I want you guys to see how a coherent process they are. So today we're gonna to start with, we're running out of time. We're running out of time. We still have uh, 13, 18, we have still have 18 minutes. Okay, we have 18 minutes. With that 18 minutes, we wanna get us started. We wanna get started. Okay, one question, um, we're gonna do one question in, um, 10A, let's do one question in 10A, okay? Basics, 10A, okay? These questions are very, very, uh, you know, common, okay? So I hope through this coverage, I can um, cover all the different aspects of it, okay? We can cover all the different aspects of it. And there's a different approaches, the different approaches. I'm gonna cover some basic approaches, okay? Um, X minus two, uh, X plus two, sorry. times x minus three, okay? Less than zero, okay? It says solve for x, okay? okay. So once again, this is a, um, okay? So think, let me, let me put this, think out aloud. I like I like to do I like to do a little investigation. Do you guys know how to solve this kind of inequalities? I kind of want to find out where you are. Do you know how to solve this inequalities? Could you, could you give me some feedback? I'm sorry, I, um... okay, Mikhail, you did respond that, uh, so X plus one is greater than one, but less than negative one. Okay, sorry, I, Mikhail, I didn't get back to you on this uh, sooner. Um, but your sentence here about, I, I know you're talking about X plus one, that absolute value greater than equals to one case. And I have a, a since covered it, okay? Um, but I wish to correct your sentence. I wish to correct your sentence. Okay, I'm gonna correct your sentence, okay? I'm sorry, guys. Uh, this. I'm a little behind on looking at the chat and that's why I need to, but I also appreciate your contribution here, okay? This is the words of feedback that I get from, from the class, which I really appreciate, right? And he said, so X plus one is greater than one, but less than negative one. The question show up here is that X plus one, is greater than, of course, greater than equals to one, but less than, less than negative one. This should be say, or. Okay. You follow me? Or x plus one less than, of course, or equal, right? and uh, you know, greater than or equal, less than or equal. So that's how I wish to make that correction. 
uh, Mikhail, if you get it, okay? So when we speak the language, we need to be concise. We need to be concise. Okay. All right. Anyway, thank you for your contribution, Mikhail. And I'm coming back to this. And some people uh, responded on chat, and I honestly forget how to solve these inequalities. <clears throat> Today, I'm gonna to give you, okay, another person contributed, is it X less than negative two and X less than three for question number one, right? So I get, some people say, I forget, is it X less than, how did you get it? Okay, I'm not commenting whether you get it right or not. Okay, this is the comments we see from the chat. Is it X less than negative two? And x and x less than three. So could you tell us how you get it? We care very much about the process. We care very much about about the process. Andy, would you like to share that? You can speak up or type, okay? All right. Um, I want to use the remaining of the time if you don't want to say anything, but you, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can comment anything you want, okay? On the chat or just let me know you want to say something to the class. I would appreciate it. I want to give you two perspectives. Remember this semester I tell you, okay? Right, so I got a feedback. Thank you, Andy. Okay, I copied Andy's comments. All right, Andy, could I say this is your work? From here, your next step is this. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? I really appreciate you share that. I really appreciate you share that. And, you, and then you said, I think I'm wrong. Why, are, why do you think you're wrong? Everybody else in the class, okay, please. Please don't idle, okay? We still have 10 minutes left. Let's think about this, okay? In a lot of situation, I don't want to, if I can't help it, I don't want to give you the answer right away. That is not always productive. Okay? When we get a fruit without the labor, we often forget about it. We'll take it for granted very easily, don't we? Right? But why do you think you're wrong? Why, Andy? Uh, just uh, I've seen it before, but I think I'm wrong. Yeah, they, they can leave, but they can leave you there. Why do you think you're wrong? Why are you being so harsh on yourself? I'm not saying you're right or wrong. Okay. So what is what is the thinking in your in your, in your mind? Uh, just just it, right there, it might not be the right steps. I'm not sure. Can you look real quick though. Why you on? Gary. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate right. it. Okay. Right. I, I, I know you have a household, you know, other people is also living there. 
I, I really do appreciate your contribution, okay? But, um, but what, 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 I, what I appreciate that you demonstrated that you just try to remember some steps, didn't you? Right? We just try to remember some steps. And this kind of technique of learning, it's often very, very ineffective. It's often very, very ineffective, okay? So without judging you right or wrong, but I, I will you know, ask you, you guys to judge whether it's right or wrong before I say anything. I want to tell you how this work is being read by your math professors. Okay, how is this work read by your mass nerdy professors. Would you like to know that? Because after all, we're gonna decide how many points you get, right? Okay, this is how we read it. We read it say, okay, this student is telling me, this student is telling me, if this is true, Okay, then this is true and that is true. This is what you're telling your professor. And your professor will judge what is the implication of this statement? Okay, so your professor, okay, the nerdy math professor, okay, the nerdy math professor will then think the nerdy professor, okay, the nerdy math professor will will you will you know decide okay we'll say what is that implication okay well, because we are assessing the student right we assess if the student understand what he's doing so what's the implication the implication the student is telling, telling us, telling the professor, telling the nerdy professor such as me. And this nerdy professor is saying, okay, if this is a capital A, this is a capital B, and this student tell me then this must be true. So you're telling the professor, okay? If the product of two numbers is less than zero, then both numbers must be negative. This is what you're telling the professor. You follow me? Do you follow me? And now the question is your professor need to judge. Is this statement true? Okay, judgment call because we have to decide is that true or false? Is that true or false? Could you guys tell me, is that true or false? And what does this mean in English? Meaning in English. If the product of two numbers is the negative, then the two numbers are both negative. That's what it means. Do you follow me? And Corbin said that's false. 
when you multiply two numbers and the, the product is a negative, can you say these two numbers are both negative? Do we still remember our principle number six? A negative number multiply a negative number is a positive, isn't it? That's what you're telling your professor. So these steps you're telling your professor, okay, that this is the final claim you make. And you know that is false, isn't it? That's how you are, your work is being judged. Do you guys understand? This is a very meaning-based, you know, subject. And obviously this statement is false. Right? And therefore, from this step to the next step, by the way, this is actually a very common mistake. Very, very common mistake. I see this all the time. I see this all the time. So how do I grade it? I usually will grade with this. And I put a cross. You're not getting any point. You're not getting any point. Because this is what you're telling me. Because that's what you're telling me. Your work is red. This is how your work is red. Left to right, top to bottom. You follow me? Just like you read any English essay or any English, uh, you know, read any article. Your work is read from left to right, top to bottom. In the context of what? If then, if then, if then, if then, if then. Remember I told you there are only two kinds of sentences in mathematics. And that's how your work is being read. Isn't that important to know? You put together all these words, you have labored. How is what your work read? That's how your work is being read. In every language possible. Mathematics, there are only two kinds of structures. You're only being read the same way. Top, left to right, top to bottom. Okay, I hope that was a good introduction. And I hope I get you guys started to think about these issues. Thinking about its meaning, okay? Because if you keep thinking about its meaning, okay? And I'm here to help you, okay? I'm gonna show a consistent theme, which is a theme of function. Okay, so we're gonna continue this tomorrow. We're gonna to continue on this tomorrow. But today I'm asking you guys to practice 10A, okay? And you're gonna examine your work, okay? Please go examine your work, okay? You do whatever you work you do. Knowing the instruction, instruction I did, uh, introduction I just give you. Examine, reflect, very important part of learning. So you will not make those mistakes again. But as a teacher, I welcome your work. I always do welcome your work, okay? I appreciate your work. Your work is a nice, you know, uh, part of my lecture. I think from your work, I may be able to help you more effectively, all right? So without further ado, I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow. If not sooner, I will head to my office hours and we'll continue this tomorrow. And of course, we're going to start out on quadratic. We're going to start on a quadratic. Okay. Um, so have a nice day. Thank you for your contribution, Andy. Okay. Good job, Coraline. Okay. <laughs>